So what we're doing in this video is we're taking this $18 Fire Stick light, and all you gotta do is take this little $2 cable here, it's called a OTG cable, and as you see, it's a little pass-through cable, and I'll still get my power to power this on, but now I have the access of a USB slot, which is really cool. So with this, I can then go ahead and load up as many ROMs as you want. You know, you could throw in all your Super Nintendo, all your Nintendo, all your PC Engine, all that good stuff, NES, and then once you drag and drop it onto here, and this is in FAT32, you could just plug that in, boot up your Fire Stick, plug it into your monitor, get a wireless controller, and you can be gaming. You can have thousands and thousands of games played through your Fire Stick. Pretty cool. But the reason why this is the best method is because you can literally add all entire collections of entire systems and consoles and have an epic collection. The first thing to do is grab some ROMs and put them on a thumb drive formatted as FAT32. The, most thumb drives will work. Just get a good solid, you know, 64 gig, 128 gig should be plenty. So I'm using Ease32 to, um, or Ease US to get this to FAT32. And basically the, you can't be NTSF or XFAT. You need to format it FAT32, whatever kind of USB drive you're using to connect to your Fire Stick. So I already have a bunch of ROMs. I got some Game Boy Advance ROMs here. I got Super Mario Kart for N64. I got some NES ROMs, Legend of Zelda. I got a Mega Drive game, Alien 3, and a Super Mario game. And obviously you can put these in folders and make it much nicer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop these games in my Fire Stick. I even created a folder called ROMs if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter what you call it, um, but it's really for your own organization. Retro Arch, you just have to tell it where your games are, it will find them. So let's go ahead and remove this from the computer and plug it into the back of our Fire Stick with an OTG cable. So as far as my OTG setup here, it's just this OTG cable here. I'll put a link in the description, very easy. And then here's just a 128 gigabyte Samsung drive I'm using, but you could use a lot of different things. And then it's a Fire Stick Lite. If this is your first boot, go ahead and set up your Wi-Fi and update your Fire Stick. Otherwise, make sure that that OTG cable is connected with the new thumb drive. And then let's get to downloading. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and search for the Downloader app. So we just hold down our microphone key, Downloader app. Release that microphone, there it is. Go ahead and select that, and here's our Downloader, click that. And then we're going to go ahead and, I already installed it, but there should be a Get button, press Get, and there it is. Then go ahead and open the app like we have it here, and head on over to the search menu here. Now here, remember I have my controller set up as well, but you got to type this out, com, go. That should load up the browser here. Go ahead and use your analog stick or your D-pad to scroll down. You want to get down to download, get retro arch. Go ahead and click in with A. Scroll down until you get to download. Got Windows 7, Windows 7, Windows ME, Windows 98, Raspberry Pi, Android. Here we go. Go ahead and click download, and now we're downloading it. It's asking if you want to install, we're saying yes. So we need to go ahead and go to our settings and turn on that we're okay with this program installing them. All right, so we just turn it on and go back, back. Now we go back to install, should work this time. Go ahead, install. All right, it's ready to install, so we'll hit done. We'll go back. The upper controller is fairly simple. Just go ahead, and on the main screen here, we're gonna go over to settings, go down, game controllers, and uh, add, what does you wanna add? We wanna add a game controller, add new controller. There it is, Pro Controller, select it. It's now pairing to the controller. And now I am connected. Ready to launch, okay. Go ahead and let it allow to get into your storage devices and everything. And the first thing you wanna do is just set up your controls. We already configured our controller, it should be working for the most part. But if you head over to controls, you can set up your hotkeys and your menu and everything else. So that's really easy, just under settings there and then input. 
The second thing we're gonna do is just install some cores. The cores are the actual individual emulators. So you need different cores depending on what systems you're gonna play. So once you set your controls, you wanna go ahead and go to the online updater here. And what that'll allow you to do is download cores. And for example, if you're gonna be doing arcade games, there's a bunch of arcade cores you can get depending on which ROMs you're using. If you wanna play Atari Lynx, you know, the original Atari systems, but for the most part, you guys are going to want to play like Nintendo and, and, and Sega. So you just scroll all the way down. So, uh, for example, uh, Game Boy Advance MGBA is a good one to get. I went ahead and go to, or got that. The NES FCEU is good for NES and Famicom games. Uh, Nintendo 64 Parallel is probably going to be your best bet, but you might want to try MuPin 64 Plus. And then um, we're going to be playing some uh, Super Nintendo. My favorite is actually the SNES 9X. And then as far as the Sega, I use Pico Drive a lot, but the Genesis Plus GX is also really good. Now, mind you, there's other cores on here. So basically, you just want to download each core depending on how many systems you want to play and just install those cores. When you're done installing, just go ahead and go back, back, back. Uh, and then we're all set there. Now, once our ROMs are on our uh, card, you have a couple options here. You can either go straight to load content and go down to storage. And you've got one, there's a bunch of numbers here. You'll click that. And as you see here, here is my thumb drive now with all my ROMs in it. And so I can just select the game, for example, Super Mario All-Stars. All and then I download a bunch of cores for this, but let's just do the SNES 9X. And we assign it the core, and then there we go. Another option you could do is just import content at the bottom there on the main menu, scan a directory, storage, scan this, uh, this, remember it's in this folder, and then we'll go ahead and scan this directory. And as you see there on the bottom of the screen, it found all our games. So let's go back, 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 back. Since we imported that content, now I can go down. And as you see now, I have those games in my retro arch, just right there at the bottom. So super easy to get to now. I just go Game Boy Advance, Sonic Adventure 2, run, pick the emulator core, and it should be running here. So yes, it's that easy, and now you're rocking and rolling, and there's nothing stopping you from taking the entire Sega collection or the entire Nintendo collection and throwing it on to your retro arch build. It's that simple. The reason why this method is so great is because you have unlimited storage potential or close to it, and you don't have to worry about running out of space for save states or anything else. It's also a great way um, if you want to drag and drop movies or photos onto your Fire Stick. It's the same process. You now have the OTG cable set up so you can you know, easily transfer files and content through between your Fire Stick and your computer or whatever other device you want. Um, as far as compatibility and gameplay, this thing definitely struggles on Nintendo 64. Um, PlayStation's okay, but don't, it's not amazing. Um, and then anything over that, it's just not going to run. It's just not a very powerful stick. Uh, remember, you can get the Fire Stick regular or the 4K Fire Stick, and uh, you can actually stream some 4K content. So if you're not on a budget, you might want to go ahead and splurge for a little nicer stick. But uh, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, let me know if you have any questions, but this should get you going, and uh, you can have this little $18 Fire Stick playing uh, thousands of games. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.